Met Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. What a wonderful day to be with you all, uh, to uh, be invited to celebrate uh, the Holy Eucharist with you and uh, to join in some conversation a little bit later. But it is good to be here together. So I want to turn to um, our passage this morning. Uh, I want to preach on, uh, in particular, that passage from Hebrews. Now, this week, I went and listened to a musician, a Guy Forsyth. Uh, and as songs and art are wont to do, sometimes they get in your head. And uh, one of uh, the songs that, that he sang, really, just the first, just the first, I couldn't stop. I actually couldn't concentrate on the rest of the song except for the first words of the song. And they, they went like this. If I was sick and couldn't get well. If I was sick and couldn't get well. And I couldn't, I know that it's about uh, a companion and trying, you know, will you stay with me? I got it. I got it, okay? But I, and then the next thing I know is that's in my prayers and in my thoughts all week long. This, what if I was sick and couldn't get well? Well, I am sick and I can't get well on my own. And that's what I know. Now, I don't think that Brother Forsyth uh, was imagining that those words would make their way into my sermon this morning, but that is exactly what has happened. Um. I've often said that when uh, things are hard, when things get tough, uh, maybe even that moment before uh, I say goodbye to this world in order to go to the, make my journey to the next, what I think is the most wonderful thing would be to be surrounded by people who love you <laughs> and people who you've shared love with. <laughs> Uh, now, the, the truth is that um, uh, not all of us get that. Not all of us get, get that. Uh, but there is that sense uh, that when things are good and beautiful and lovely and joyful, the same people that are with us in those moments might help us make that journey in the end. But what Hebrews points out to us is that Not even we can be the priests we need in that moment for one another. That we can bring so much love and so much care to those moments, the good moments, the hard moments. We can bring everything we have in our relationship to that moment. But there's still only one priest who can help us to do the next thing. Now, as I prayed this, I was mindful, as has been kind of floating around in my head and heart over these last few uh, weeks of Lent, um, that passage from Luke, uh, physician, heal thyself. And the recognition that I can't, (laughs) that I can't heal myself, I can't, so I am sick, and I can't get well. My sin-sick soul might be words that come from a hymn or two, but those are then combined with that passage from Romans seven nineteen. I do the things I do not want to do, right? No matter how hard I try up here and even commit to in here, I will continue to do things that I don't want to do. And this is the sin that is in me. This is the sin that's a part of my very being. And you and I are indeed a college of physicians trying to help one another uh, with what is ailing us. And in fact, we even in our prayer book and in our tradition speak together about being a kingdom of priests, don't we? Uh, And that we've inherited that from the great high priest. 
But I want to flip that a little bit. I want to play some with that, uh, thinking a little bit about a, a great theologian, Marilyn McCord Adams, who reminds us that actually, or reminds me, uh, that actually that we are a kingdom of priests. Uh, the problem is we just keep sacrificing one another at the altars of our lives, right? Uh, and that... Uh, uh, we we seek <laughs> to make all kinds of offerings of one another, uh, our self-indulgences, our escapes from fear and consequences. We burn each other up and out. We eat an, each other for lunch. Uh, we engage in acts of placation. Uh, and, uh, and we do all of this in some sense that maybe we will ward off the demons, the disease, old age, death. Uh, we sacrifice anything we can to stay around as long as we can or to gain a little bit of power, even though I may not want to do those things I do. Them. Even though I would like to escape that sin, sick illness that's in me, I can't. Uh, we sacrifice to think, I believe, that we are some kind of Greek god or demigod playing in our own pantheon of gods, trying to beat each other out for the top place. And it doesn't matter whether that's a friendship circle, a schoolroom, classroom, job, workplace. It's in all of us. It's in all of us. And uh, the, the truth about this kingdom of priests is that our brokenness uh, treats other people almost as if they are to be manipulated like the gods did <laughs> to help us navigate the world around us. Long list of people on my fearless and moral inventory, which I keep track of and have done so for many years, is a long list of parents, money, people, and friendships. Eaten, burnt, purchased, and acted out. But only Christ is our priest. Only Christ delivers us and is present in the hour of our need and at the hour of our death. And what I'm saying is that Forsyth reminded me that I'm not only sick and I can't get well, but Jesus Christ has come into the world to take on that illness for me. That, that even though I'm going, it doesn't mean, mean the world's going to be great or my life is all planned out and ahead of me, but it does mean that my, myself at my worst and at my best, which still isn't quite holy, will be redeemed by the one great high priest at the end. So it won't be my last words, but his, that are heard as I cross over. Father, forgive them. Forgive Andy, for he did not know what he was doing. The priestly role then is taken up by Jesus. That's what Hebrews playing with for us. Uh, it enables Jesus to be seen then as the one sufficient suffering and sacrifice for all of us. And we don't have to hustle for it anymore. It's already been given to us. It's been acted out. The, the debt has been paid. You can, there are so many different forms of, uh, of understanding Jesus' sacrifice. On, I, can't, I think there's like 12 traditional forms of understanding the cross. Let me just say, they're all good. They're all good. But there's just one thing we have to remember. It's done. It's done. And the hustling can end so that we may come closer to God and allow God and Christ Jesus to celebrate at the altar on our behalf. In Jesus, we see the culmination of worship and sacrifice. We have him as a perfect oblation, a sacrifice and a satisfaction, our prayer books say, for the sins of the whole world. So it's not just me, but for the sins of my neighbor. So I can no longer look at my neighbor and say, oh, you are a sinful human being. I'm sure glad God loves me. 
You have to recognize that Christ died for the neighbor too, whether they know it or not, whether they accept it or not, no matter what their tradition is or not. We have to actually, the work is for us to see them from the vantage point of the cross, to be able to see our neighbors, whoever they are and whatever they have done as Jesus sees them. That's what it means to allow the great high priest to come into our lives. And it's not just for this world that this has taken place, but it is for the world to come. And so that we know that Jesus has gone, and we use these words as he's gone to the throne of grace itself, that God has honored. This is a way, I mean, I don't know what it looks like, right? I haven't been there yet. But these are the words that our tradition uses to help us understand that the, that the sacrifice was accepted, that God welcomed Christ in a way that allows him to intercede on our last day, that allows Christ to reach down. I love that icon uh, from Holy Saturday. I don't know if you've ever seen it. You can go on, on Google and look it up. But it has Christ reaching down and grabbing a hold of Adam and Eve and pulling them out of the grave. Right? Somehow, that has powerful meaning that when my hour and moment comes, no matter how I have failed our Lord Jesus in this world, that hand is going to come down and grab me and pull me towards the throne of grace. In him, judgment has been made, but it's also been met. And when it does come time for each of us, no matter how long that sickness has held us, no matter how deep and horrible it has driven us, or how good the life we've lived has been, it is only our great high priest in Jesus Christ who will welcome us like a prodigal father who breaks down all the rules that the world has set in front of us and sees us coming up the road and welcomes us into everlasting life. And that, my friends, is some good news. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter, at Texas Bishop. And spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.